Hey, several months ago, my dad sent me a email with a link to a crosscut sled for a table saw. Um, I use my table saw a lot whenever I do woodworking. It's kind of my primary tool uh, for woodworking. I may do other stuff afterwards, but it's it's one of them that I do uh, any anything from rough cuts to some you know detailed cuts. And uh, I thought you know this is a great idea, and I wanted to see if I can expand on the capabilities of my table saw. Now what I did is I went out and watched a lot of other videos, read some uh, web pages, stuff like that, got some good ideas, saw some good ideas, things that could be better. Um, and I decided to put some engineering behind it. And uh, I'm sharing this video and hopefully that someone out there will watch it and will maybe get some ideas off of this. Maybe you can make one better. Uh, maybe you'll see something in here that doesn't work for you, but uh, the whole idea is to to share what I did and uh, inspire others. So uh, let's get started. I'll, I'll I'll show you what I did with this one. So the number one requirement of this crosscut sled, no matter what, the table saw must still be able to fit in there. That's its home. That's where it has to stay. It fits with about an inch and a half of clearance. <laughs> so we got it. Perfect. Still fits in its home. All right, before we go into the crosscut sled, I'm going to spend just a minute talking about this table saw. This is the DeWalt 74911. I'm not going to go into the basics of the, the a table saw. If you don't know what that is, you need to go watch some other videos first. But this is a, a, it is a job site saw made by DeWalt, made to work outside, even in the rain, whatever. And it's a, it's a good quality saw. Before I bought it, read a bunch of reviews, went over all the uh, specifics, went to several stores, looked at them, looked at all the features, and, and this is what I came up with. It is very sturdy, very rigid, it doesn't wobble. The, the legs fold up easily, it's portable, folds away nicely and tucks away nicely, um, as you've seen. Now, one of the, uh, one of the things that I, it is that's better than normal, or I should say kind of special about this saw, is the fence system. And I'll show you, so the fence system is a quick release, you can just release that. And if you bring this over, there's a tape measure over here on the side. It has two sets of numbers, and you'll see why. So you go to zero, and you can see it's perfectly lined up with the blade. You can lock it in, whatever you needed to do, right, and come over here. Now, one of the other nice things about it, if I bring it out here, you can see this thing comes around and locks in. Now, this is perfectly level with the table, so it actually extends the table out. If you had a board that you needed to run out here, you can extend this out. All right. Now this is the, this is the other thing that I like about this saw and there the engineering behind it is that this thing actually extends out. So it'll un, this fence will unlatch from here and come all the way out here and then I can move it out even further and this maybe even going off camera now. It's way out here. Um, and so this really extends the ability of saw. Not only that, but I can bring this back in here and It can go over to the other side. So if I needed, if I, I could either bring the fence, just the fence up like this, or again, I can extend the table out, out to here. Okay, so here's my crosscut sled. Um, as you can see, first thing you might notice is it has a lot of metal and a lot of wood. <laughs> yes, that, uh, one of the things that I noticed is that a lot of the carpenters were making they're crosscut sleds out of nothing but wood. Now, I love wood. I grew up around my dad doing a lot of woodworking carpentry. I have a fond appreciation for fine woodworking, but uh, there's a love-hate relationship because wood moves. It changes with temperature, it swells, it'll warp on you and everything else. So I use Baltic birch, which is the most stable wood that, that you could make something like this out of. And I reinforced it on multiple axis with extruded aluminum and T-tracks. Um, stainless steel fasteners uh, and everything else that I could do to really just make this thing solid. The other thing that I noticed is that um, a lot of times whenever they were cutting here there was only a small piece of wood that was keeping this thing from bowing at all and that just wasn't acceptable to me. I wanted some metal to really reinforce it and so that's uh, kind of the materials behind the design. It's all Baltic birch, stainless steel and aluminum holding this thing together and it's about as true as you can get and and I don't anticipate it uh, moving at all. The other thing that I'm going to add real quick here is all the Baltic birch is sealed with um, 
wax-free shellac interior and then an actual exterior of pre-catalyzed lacquer. And the reason I use a pre-catalyzed lacquer really mostly is because I had some around from another project. So that's the main reason that I used it. So the next thing that I decided to do different than most of those videos I saw out there is um, a lot of those guys were just cutting pieces of wood, strips of wood to go down in these slots. Um, the problem is, is you would see them move their sled and as it got towards the end, it would tip up. Uh, I didn't want that at all. That's not only dangerous, but it's going to ruin the accuracy of your cuts. Um, so what I decided to do is machine some, some out of aluminum, some T-tracks that actually are custom designed to fit into this DeWalt table. Now you might be wondering, well, how did you do that? I guess now's the time to maybe bring in the discussion of precision. So there's a, a um, uh, as most of you know, I'm an engineer and in engineering, there is something called accumulation of error. Now, what does that mean? Okay, so the most accurate saw that I've ever measured has about five thousandths of an inch run out. And some people say, well, I'm, my saw is accurate enough that I can cut on the inside of the outside of a pencil line. Okay, so let's talk about that for a minute. A pencil line, when I say five thousandths of an inch, what I mean by that is the blade, you can't see it with your eye, but the blade wobbles as it spins around at the end, it has five thousandths of run out, right? Now that's not a lot for a piece of carpentry machinery. It's not a lot at all. And just to show you the thickness of a piece of paper is about three thousandths of an inch. I don't know if you can see that or not on the dial, but it's about three thousandths of an inch. Okay, so if you took a piece of paper and cut it thickness wise into three strips, I can, we can measure that with some, with some calipers. Okay. Now the thickness of a pencil line is right at about 45,000. So that's, that's actually big in the way of precision. That's not precise. A pencil line is not precise. Um, so anyway, but a CNC machine, which can make these is more square than a carpentry square. It's the most square thing you'll ever even conceive of. And um, the precision of it is down to under one thousandth of an inch. So everything is going to be precise to one third the thickness of that paper or less. So, all right. So I want to talk about, now we talked about precision. Um, I chose to machine these tracks of aluminum to exactly match the tracks in the table saw. Um, this one does not tip up at all. Um, I don't, there's no safety concerns except for the blade itself. Much better than just dropping some, some uh, pieces of, of purple heart or you know walnut or whatever you wanted to put in there and then have the whole bed tip forward whenever you, or whenever you get near the end of the pass. Just to demonstrate that real quick, so this thing's super smooth on the action, just, just glides across there. There's no movement back and forth. The tolerances again are one thousandth of an inch, but also I can drag this all the way back to here and let it go and it just stays there, right? It doesn't, I don't have to worry about whenever I tip this thing all the way forward with this thing flipping up on me and the, and the driving up uh, and losing either the cut or potentially my, my hand uh, with fumbling around with that. So for the fence, for the miter fence, I went with a piece of extruded aluminum. I saw some videos out there where they were using wood and you know, that's, that's okay. But the problem is, is that's not going to be straight and true once you get a humidity change or something like that, unless they sealed it real good and, and, and then it's still kind of best, but especially something that's going to really determine the quality of your cuts. I uh, wanted something that's gonna stay true and stay square. So what I went is with this piece of extruded aluminum, I can adjust it to whatever angle I want, way out here, slide it back here. I can, I can kind of go wherever I want with this, bring it down in here, um, you know, and then what it has on the back, it has some uh, nice little quick adjust thumb screws that I can set this to whatever I want and then lock it in and it'll stay there and it's solid. You know, it's not going anywhere. Now, the other thing, again, we talk about precision. We want this to be as precise of a tool as we can. So um, one of the things that I do instead of just, you know, some people might put a 
little wedge in there or, or something like that. I want to know exactly what I'm cutting. So I have a, a digital pro protractor and I have no idea what this angle is, but we're going to find out. So one side goes up against the saw blade itself. The other side goes over here and this is, this is accurate to a, a tenth of a degree. So this is 46.8 degree cut that I would do exactly on something like that if I was going to cut that. All right. Anyway, yeah, that, I think that was a much better idea than some of those that I've seen out there using that piece of extruded loom. The other thing that this allows me to do that, I'm, that I like is this allows me, because this has those channels in it, it has the same track channels as this, I can put clamps and hold downs. I could actually put a hold down here and have it hold that workpiece in place to keep my fingers out of the way while I go and I cut it. So that was another decision behind using this piece of extrusion rather than a piece of wood. So anyway, again, I think it was a, a good decision and it's something that uh, I think that I'm glad I did. All right, so the next feature I wanna talk about, uh, and pretty much all of these crosscut sleds have the same thing, um, is this, uh, this stop right here, right? So uh, it's more of a quick measure. You know, if I need to do an ultra precise cut, I would use some dial calipers or some calipers to measure exactly from the blade. There's a lot of times that, it, you know, doing a 16th of an inch is close enough. So uh, in fact, most cases it is with a saw. So that's what this is for. As you can see, I've got rule coming off to the left and to the right. And there's a little, I don't know how well you can see the little line on there maybe hard to see in the camera but there's a little red line in there and you see whenever it hits the end of there it's it's actually touching the saw blade right so if i needed to hit that that's at zero you know this was on zero right up against the blade if i need to make a two inch quick cut you know again sometimes a ruler is just fine um i could put that on two lock it in bring in my piece of wood bring it over here touch it to that uh, to the stop and make a cut and then that would be two inches exactly on this side the other thing is is you can come to the other side of the blade and again so if I if I bring it forward here bring it in and I touch the blade you can see it's at zero I don't know how well you can see it but you can see it's at zero and then any any measurement off of that is going to be whatever it is needs to be and then you can again Bring it in here, make your cut, All right? So uh, that's what that's what this is. Again, I went with the Rockler one. Um, it's as good. I know there were some other ones out there. Um, I like this one because I like the way that this thing inlaid and it worked really good with this extruded aluminum. So that was why I chose to use that one uh, over some other options that were out there. So let's talk about accuracy for just a second. So the one, if you're gonna build one of these, of course, you want it to improve and, and not degrade from the accuracy of your saw. Now I watched a lot of videos where they were making the actual sled with their saw. And again, the problem with that, as I had mentioned earlier, is you have accumulation of error. So what, is, what does accumulation of error mean? It means if you have five thousandths error in your saw or even a thousandth error in your saw, and then you start build, building this thing, every single cut you have five thousandths pretty much you're up to a tenth of an inch error and if you go and you watch a lot of videos you see them trying to fudge the the fence and all that i never did any of that um, and again the reason is is because this was this whole piece of all the wood and some of the metal was machined on a cnc machine which means that this whole thing is more square than a carpentry square and in every dimension is accurate to a thousandth of an inch. Every one of them. When I bolted this thing on, I didn't think I would now. But there's a test and you can go out and look for it. If you want to know if you have a radial arm saw or a table saw or whatever, and you have any kind of fence, whatever it is, maybe you just have a, uh, the miter that came with the machine or whatever, it's, you can search it, look for videos on it. There's people that go in depth on it. Um, but it's called five cuts to a perfect square. You should test your equipment like this and then you'll know. But you do have to have a set of dial calipers. Again, accuracy of a pencil width is not accurate anymore by, by today's standard. That's from the 40s and 50s, I guess. Um, so what you do though, essentially, in a nutshell, what five cuts to a perfect square, again, I'm not gonna go into it, but in a nutshell, it's, it's geometry. It, let's say you have, uh, I don't know, just a 10th of a degree error, right? Every time that you make a, so what you do is you're going to make a cut, turn it, and it doesn't matter what size board you have. You know, you can start with a longer one, smaller one. 
You're going to turn it 90 degrees, make another cut, turn it 90 degrees, make your fourth cut. Uh, I'm sorry, third cut, then your fourth cut, and then come back and make one more cut on the side. And the reason is every time that you make that cut against your fence, you're accumulating air. Then what you're going to do is on that side that you made the last cut, you're going to measure the, the length. So if I cut this on my last side, like this is my one, two, three, four, then I'm going to measure down here and measure down here. And the error between those can then tell you how much you would need to adjust the fence. Now, again, having made this on a CNC machine, I had zero doubt that I was going to have to make adjustment. This was my test for it. And I just want to, uh, we'll measure it right here. Um, kind of doing this on the fly. I've already done this, but that measures on this end measures uh, 5.183. 5.183. Now I flip it over and 5. Point, oops, hang on, not even on yet. There we go. 5.183, meaning there is not, there's anything any variation between these is less than a thousandth of an inch we talked about that earlier less than a third of a piece of paper that is precise and, and I, I just probably increase the precision of this saw uh, by making it that way so um, this these are this can make perfectly square and perfectly straight cuts to the ability of the saw itself. All right, so next let's talk real quick about safety. Now, it's kind of a, uh, everyone knows that a table saw isn't exactly the safest tool to have. It's a very useful tool, very uh, uh, accurate tool, very, very uh, a great tool to have for any kind of carpentry, but you do have an open blade. It, it'll remove a finger and a blink of an eye and everything else. So um, anyway, with the crosscut sled, this is what most people are using. They're using this little stop block here to cut into because when the blade comes through your fence, um, you don't want it just coming through. That's how you get your finger cut. And the idea is you keep your hand away from there, not on there. Um, you know, I mean, that's a good idea. And, I, and you can see I put it on there. I definitely don't want to expose the blade over here. But, you know, we've all been there where you're trying to get through a project, make those quick cuts um, and, and get it done before the sun goes down. And I was sitting there thinking, man, there's really nothing that stops your finger from, from, you know, if you had it here or you did something, there's nothing that keeps that blade from going through that uh, stop block there. Um, again, people had other ways of, of doing it. I didn't like any of them. So what I came up with is, again, using those T-tracks, uh, I reverse engineered the inside uh, dimensions of that T-track, and then I used the CNC machine to to make a connector or a slide that goes inside the T-Track. And then on the back of it, uh, this, is, this black part is 3D printed, it's plastic so it doesn't beat up my table. And then this is a stop. So you can see these, those are little number six stainless steel screws, little aluminum, um, and, and this piece of uh, 3D printed plastic right there. And so what this does is this goes in here, oh, and then it has, sorry, it has two set screws in here the stainless steel set screws that ride in there. And so what I can do in this is I can bring it in here like this. I can bring my blade forward and let's say I don't want it to go anywhere past uh, right, right there. That would, be, that would be where as deep as you want to cut. I put this up against the table and I set these two set screws real quick. And now It doesn't stop. It stops right there every time. It's not gonna, right? So now I don't have to worry about that. Wherever I, if I set this up first, it's gonna hit that table and stop it and not allow that to go through even if I'm not fully paying attention uh, to where that blade is. So I have not, I didn't see anybody come up with that at all. I invented that all on my own. Um, I think it's a kind of a mandatory feature. And uh, you know you can remove it if you're if you're not using it can be removed or added. Um, you can also use it to um, if you if you really want to just lock this down where no one's going to move it. You can slide it all the way forward or whatever you want to do. So anyway, those are the safety features that I added into this design. So by now, if you were paying attention, there should be two questions that came into mind. Um, number one, why didn't I use the whole table here? That kind of looks strange. Why didn't I extend it out here? And the second, what if you want to make an angle cut, an actual bevel cut? What if you want to do that? And I saw in some videos where they were making them in here anyway, 
And that's not ideal. Again, we're wanting to increase the capabilities of this thing. So this is a zero clearance slot cut by the blade. There's nothing to the, to the side of it. And we want to keep that way. If we start making bevel cuts, it gets sloppy. So what are we going to do about that? Well, glad you asked. Remember I said that the DeWalt uh, design with the, the uh, fence was going to come into play? Well, here it is. Right now I can take and make bevel cuts and I can even, if I wanted to, I, because I have this T-Trek over here, I can even bring in uh, my miter fence and I can make compound cuts if I needed to. But this allows me to make all my bevel cuts on the side, on this side, and not have to, not mess up my zero clearance here in the middle. So any, any of those that I need to do, I can just make them right here on the side. As much as I love this De DeWalt uh, fence, um, it, it was kind of limiting because as you can see, when you put this on here, that's as long a board as you can cut. And there's been plenty of times that I said, man, I, I, could, I could even uh, cut longer boards. There's been a lot of times I've had to put rollers out here or I really needed that extra long fence. Um, you know, and, th and those big carpentry saws, they, they have those, uh, those large ones. And I'm like, you know, I shouldn't be limited just because this is a, a job site and a, a mobile saw. I still should be able to cut whatever I want. I mean, why not? We can make that happen, right? So what does that look like? Well, it looks like this. <laughs> so, you know, why not take the engineering that DeWalt put into this and uh, copy what they did and make it suit my purposes. So again, what I did is I got some uh, extruded aluminum here and I got some extruded aluminum angle. This is aluminum, so it suits it well. And um, I reverse engineered DeWalt's hooks there and used the CNC machine to carve those out to where it matches the exact hooks that they have it set on, right? And, and so it sits right in there. And then my other challenge was, is that this was too thick. You know, it was gonna actually be higher than the table and I needed it to be level with the table. So I used the CNC machine to mill down this side of it. You know, this side is, is has the anodizing on it. This side has been shaved down. You can see probably, I don't know if you can see, but this top is thicker than the bottom, almost twice as thick. So I machined that down so that the thickness is perfect. Um, and now I've just extended the table all the way out to here. So what am I gonna do with that? I mean, if you have a board, it's still going to just kind of hang there. You kind of need to support it, right? I agree. And just like that, now we have our extension and, and this size brings it to almost as uh, the size of a full size uh, carpentry table saw. So I now have that much room and, a, and an extra large fence. Um, so the fence needed to be obviously in perfect alignment and it needed to be coupled rigid because if there's a board there, I need it to, you know, not waver. It needed to be straight. So how did I do that? On the back part, I uh, CNC machine this, this piece of aluminum and I used two more of those uh, quick attach screws that I made. And this couples through the use of this T-Track, uh, it couples these together to, to where it holds that seam perfectly. I know there's some different uh, color variation, but they're, if you ran your finger across that, it feels like one solid piece of wood. All right. And in the front, for, for the front, I took that same design that I used for that safety feature, that stop, um, and I used those to make three couplings along these tracks. So these have little number six set screws, stainless set screws on both sides, two on each side, and there's three of them going across. So as you tighten those up, those make sure that this two pieces of extrusion hold perfectly flat together. Um, and of course that seam, there's a seam there. You can see it just looks like a little line. Um, that right there is, is all that there is. And you can see even the tape measure uh, is, is uh, there's just a little bit of a line on that. There's really nothing uh, to measure as far as how much room that there is. And so the other nice thing is now because the tape measure extends across, I can actually slide this all the way across both pieces there and lock it down and do my measuring all the way across. Um, so anyway, now I have a, a cross cut slide that greatly extended the size, the overall size of this table saw. 
and the capabilities of it and um, it cuts straight and true so anyway those are all my design again i i, I have not uh, seen one out there that has uh, quite this much to it and, and expands the capabilities of a table saw this much uh, pretty proud of it uh, i love the accuracy i love the safety i love the precision uh, and I, I love some of the uh, engineering design that went into it so Hopefully this was helpful to you. Hopefully there's someone out there that'll find this inspiring for their design or maybe use some of it. Maybe it won't work for you. Maybe you'll come up with something even better. But um, either way, I hope, hopefully it was helpful and we'll talk to you later.